though my brother humiliated himself at our cousin's wedding, and instead of helping him, I let him fall face first into the cake I spent weeks making. So now my family's furious, but I'm wondering if he finally got what he deserved. My parents, Tom, 58M, and Linda, 56F, worked tirelessly to support us. Dad was a high school English teacher, while mom worked as a nurse in a local hospital. They instilled in us the principles of hard labor and humility, emphasizing that character is more important than material goods. Growing up, our home was simple but full of love. We had weekly game nights where we sat around our old scratch dining table and played board games. Mom would make her wonderful chocolate chip cookies and dad would tell us stories about his teaching days. Those nights are among my favorite childhood recollections. My older brother, Jake, 32M, and I were close as children. We'd spend hours building sophisticated Lego castles and exploring the woods behind our house. Jake was always the leader of our trips, and his imagination ran wild as he made up wonderful stories about the mythical animals who lived in our backyard. Jake started high school and things began to change. He had always been brilliant, but it wasn't until his freshman year that he truly excelled academically. His teachers appreciated his intelligence and he started winning awards in various academic competitions. I was proud of him, but I also felt a deepening shadow as Jake's accomplishments surpassed my own average performance. The real watershed moment occurred when Jake was given a scholarship to Mentor Academy, a prestigious private high school in the surrounding city. It was a great opportunity that our parents couldn't turn down. Despite the financial pressure of additional expenses not covered by the scholarship, they worked extra shifts and reduced spending to make it work. Jake felt as if he had entered another universe the instant he arrived at Meadowbrook. He made friends with children from wealthy homes, began using phrases we had never heard before, and expressed contempt for our modest existence. When he first brought home a buddy from school, I overheard him apologize for our quaint house. I recall feeling embarrassed and angry. This was our house, where we had created so many beautiful memories. As Jake's high school years continued, the gap between us widened. He rarely attended our family game nights anymore, stating he had too much schoolwork or planned with his new buddies. So when he joined us, he made snide remarks about our provincial traditions. It pained to see the sibling I once admired transform into someone I scarcely knew. Despite Jake's adjustments, our parents continued to celebrate his achievements. They proudly told anybody who would listen about Jake's flawless grades, his role as debate team captain in the prominent universities that were already interested in him. And meanwhile, my good average performance and involvement in the school chorus is scarcely registered, so I tried not to be bitter and focused on my own hobbies. I joined the school's baking club and developed a patient for penchant for making delectable desserts. A kitchen became my safe haven where I could express myself and be proud of my accomplishments. Grump saw my mom occasionally join me in the kitchen and those moments were a particular bonding time. Jake was accepted to an Ivy League Week university on the East Coast after graduating high school. So our parents held a huge celebration the day his acceptance letter arrived. They invited the entire extended family and Jake revealed his attention. I recall standing in the corner of our living room, watching the family fawn over Jake and feeling invisible. I stayed close to home during college, attending a state university only an hour away. I worked part-time at a local bakery to help pay for my education and provide for our family. Jake rarely returned home during his undergraduate years, stating he was too preoccupied with internships or networking opportunities. When he came to visit, he'd tell us about his significant connections and his college Paul's affluent lifestyles. Jake was hired by an inn in New York City after graduating from college. He moved into a beautiful Manhattan apartment, and his life became increasingly reminiscent of a glitzy TB program. Meanwhile, I began working full-time at the bakery where I had previously worked in college, gradually saving money with the goal of eventually opening my own. Fast forward to now, and I've finally realized my dream of creating my own modest bakery in our hometown. It's been open for a year, and while it's not making me wealthy, it's doing well enough to allow me to recruit two part-time employees and even assist our parents with some of their expenditures. Mom and dad have been encouraging, frequently popping by to try new recipes or simply chat during slow afternoons. Jake, on the other hand, has continued to move up the corporate ladder. He's now a senior consultant who frequently brags on social media about his business class trips, elegant client dinners, and pricey watches. So his travels home have become increasingly uncommon, and when he comes, he spends a majority of his time on his phone or whining about how there is nothing to do in our backwater town. Last month, our cousin Amy, 25F, married. Amy and I have always been close, She'd frequently join me in the kitchen during family gatherings where we'd gossip while frosting cupcakes or kneading bread dough. So when she requested me to bake her wedding cake, I was honored and spent weeks refining the design. The wedding was a family affair conducted in the refurbished barn on Amy's fiance's Fana farm. It was a lovely rustic event with fairy lights hung over wooden beams and wildflowers and mason jars on each table. I arrived early to set up the cake and assist with any last minute preparations. Jake arrived shortly before the ceremony, dressed in a costly designer suit that seemed absurdly out of place in the barn scene. Throughout the reception, he made loud remarks about how quaint and folksy the wedding was, 
his voice full of disdain. I witnessed Amy and her new husband's hurt expressions, but they were too polite to say anything. I tried to ignore Jake and focus on Amy's special day, but things took a turn when Jake drank too much. He began flirting aggressively with Sarah, 24F one of the bridesmaids and Amy's greatest friend since childhood. Sarah was plainly uncomfortable and tried to discreetly excuse herself, but Jake didn't get the signal. Jake slipped and spilled his crimson wine on his pricey white dress shirt and suit jacket. He began creating a commotion, loudly screaming about the cost of the outfit and asking that someone clean it for him. The people were staring, and I noticed Amy looking distraught on what was meant to be her beautiful day. So part of me wanted to help Jake to keep him from exposing himself further and spoiling Amy's wedding. But another part of me believed he did deserve to face the consequences of his actions for once, so I remained where I was pretending to ignore the hubbub. Jake tried to approach Sarah again, and things escalated. He tripped and fell face first into the wedding cake, a three-tiered masterpiece I had worked on for weeks. And the entire room became silent. Yajik was coated in cake and icing, looking really foolish in a destroyed fancy suit. She peered around the room, his gaze falling on me. I could see a wordless plea for help in his eyes as a glimpse of the brother I used to know peering through his drunken stupor. But I turned away, leaving him to cope with the catastrophe he caused. Our parents went to Jake's rescue, pulling him up and swiftly leading him out of the reception area. So I stayed behind to help Amy and her new husband salvage what was left of their wedding reception. We were able to preserve the bottom tier of the cake, and Amy was gracious enough to joke about the situation, saying it would make for a memorable wedding story. But as I watched Amy bite into what remained of the cake I had put my heart into, I couldn't help but feel a range of emotions, rage at Jake's behavior, guilt for not assisting him, and profound grief for how far away we had drifted. Am I a jerk for not assisting my brother in his moment of humiliation, despite the fact that he has been annoying me for years? Should I have set aside my hatred and intervened to assist him? Or was it appropriate to let him suffer the consequences of his conduct for once? Update 1. Amy's wedding took place approximately a month ago, and a lot has happened since then. I thought I'd give you an update on Jake's situation and how things have progressed in our family. I awoke the day after the wedding to a torrent of angry texts from Jake. He accused me of abandoning him and made him appear foolish. Some of his texts were hardly comprehensible consisting of drunken typos and furious allegations. I didn't answer any of them, figuring that it was best to let him calm down before engaging in any kind of discourse. Later that day, I got a call from our parents. Mom was in tears and Dad's voice was full of sadness. They chastised me for not assisting Jake, stating I should have set my sentiments aside and aided my brother in his hour of need. I tried to explain my side of the story, but they were too concerned with Jake's disgrace to listen. The call ended with Mom sobbing and Dad telling me I needed to apologize to Jake. I spent the following several days in a whirl of contradictory feelings. Things. On the one hand, I felt bad for not assisting Jake, despite everything. He was still my brother. On the other hand, I was outraged. Angry at Jake for his behavior, angry at my parents for always siding with him, and angry at Grant myself for still worrying what others thought. A week after the wedding, our grandma, Nana Rose, 75F, asked the entire family to Sunday dinner. Nana Rose has always served as our family's matriarch, the voice of reason in every quarrel. She lives in the ancient farmhouse where my father grew up which has always felt more like home to me than our own house. I was scared to go because I knew Jake would be there, but I couldn't refuse Nana Rose. As I drove up Nana's meandering driveway, I was brought back to childhood summers spent running around her vegetable garden, helping her make strawberries, hepberry jam, and listening to her tell stories about our family's past. Nana Rose was the one who taught me how to bake, tenderly guiding my young hands as we needed bread dough together. The evening started quite tense. Jake refused to look at me, and our parents ignored me, but Nana Rose, bless her heart, was having none of it. After the main course, her famous pot roast, which reminds me of comfortable Sunday dinners, she cleared her throat and addressed the elephant in the room. So now I've heard about what happened at Amy's wedding, she said, her tone firm yet sympathetic. And I think it's high time we had a family discussion about respect and humility. What followed was an hour-long talk in which Nana Rose carefully addressed the difficulties in our family dynamic. She discussed how Jake's actions had been tolerated for years, how our parents' favoritism had caused a schism among siblings, and how my bitterness had grown over time. She reminded us of the ideals that our grandfather, who died five years ago, had always attempted to inculcate in us. Grandpa had been a farmer with few words but much wisdom. He once said a family is like a garden. You reap what you sow, and if you don't tend to all the plants equally, some will wither while others overgrow. To my astonishment, Jake did not interject or attempt to defend himself. He sat there, appearing more modest than I had seen him in years. When Nana Rose finished speaking, Jake did something unexpected. He apologized. I'm sorry, he muttered his voice barely audible. I've been a real jerk, haven't I? The room went silent for a moment before I found my voice. Yeah, you have, I said, but without the rage I had been harboring for so long. 
Jake went on to say that the wedding incident was not the only thing that had occurred recently. He had lost his position at the consulting firm. Apparently, his behavior at work was as arrogant as it was at home, and his employer had had enough. He stated that he had overcompensated during the wedding in order to maintain the idea of success. As Jake talked, I saw my brother again, not the arrogant condescending guy he'd grown into, but the vulnerable, uncertain person beneath. So he spoke of feeling adrift, the pressure he put on himself to succeed, and how hollow his accomplishments felt. Our parents, to their credit, apologized for allowing Jake's actions. Mom, tears in her eyes, revealed that she had pushed Jake so hard because she wanted him to have the possibility she had not had. Dad admitted that he favored Jake because he resembled himself at that age, ambitious and anxious to put small town life behind. As for myself, I admit that I could have handled the wedding situation better. While I didn't regret not rushing to Jake's rescue right once, I realized that my hesitation was fueled by years of pent up animosity. And by the conclusion of the night, I felt as if a weight had been lifted. We didn't get everything resolved in one dinner but it was a start. Jake asked if he may come by my bakery sometime and see what I had constructed. I agreed, but warily. As we were leaving, Nana Rose approached me. She pushed a battered leather-bound book into my hands, her recipe book, which I had seen her write numerous times over the years. I think you'll make better use of this than I will now, she added with a wink. And remember, family is like bread dough. Sometimes you need to let it rest, but you always come back to knead it with love. So it's been a few weeks since that supper and things have changed not great but different. Jake has made an attempt to be less arrogant and our parents have been more concerned with treating us equally. Jake has begun to come to the bakery not only to visit but also to help. He's bad at baking but he's beige means more to me than words can explain. I'm trying to let go of some past resentments. It's not easy years of feeling second best don't go away overnight but I'm working on it day by day. I know we still have a long way to go but for the first time in years I am optimistic about my connection with my brother, my home, and our family. I'll keep you all updated as things go. Update 2. It's been another two months since my last post and I wanted to share the progress our family has achieved as well as some new obstacles that have occurred. Following our family supper at Nana Rose's, Jake and I began to restore our friendship. He's been coming to the bakery on a regular basis, not just to visit but also to out. It began as a disaster. He almost wrecked a batch of croissants and managed to get flour into places I had no idea existed in my kitchen. But he's been persistent and I must confess. It's been lovely having him around. One day, as we were closing up the bakery, Jake admitted that he had always envied my ability to make something solid with my hands. So all those years in consulting, he explained, and I never got to see or taste the consequences of my effort. But here, every day, you create something real that makes people happy. That chat inspired us to establish a new tradition of Sunday brunches in which we take turns cooking for ink for each other. So last Sunday, Jake tried to make cinnamon rolls from scratch. They were humorously uneven and little overdone, but the effort meant more to me than any expensive gift he could have purchased in his previous life. Jake has also been volunteering at the local community center, where he teaches basic computer skills to elderly. So it's been great to him use his knowledge to help others without expecting any recognition or return. That he informed me that working with the elders has given him a fresh perspective on what is actually essential in life. Our parents have also been making attempts. Mom has been increasingly interested in my bakery, even asking for baking lessons. Dad, who is usually distant, has been trying to connect with both of us equally. And C's been assisting me with business planning for the bakery and brainstorming ideas with Jake for potential new career pathways. However, just as our relationship was improving and new difficulty developed, our parents, particularly our mother, appeared to be struggling with the shift in family dynamics. About a month ago, we held another family meal, this time at our parents' home. Jake and I arrived together, chatting amicably about a funny event at my bakery involving a mix-up of salt and sugar and a batch of cookies. I sensed something was up with mom from the moment we came in. She appeared stiff, her smile a little forced as she greeted us. Throughout dinner, mom kept bringing up Jake's previous employment, asking if he had heard back from any of his important connections. So mom's face sank as Jake respectfully diverted the subject, talking instead of his volunteer work. I could sense disappointment in her eyes, which made me uneasy. Mom called me away into the living room after dinner while Jake was helping dad with the dishes, which was another new development. So the room was adorned with framed images of our family, and I couldn't help but note how many of them celebrated Jake's accomplishment, the high school graduation, college admittance, and first job offer. It was like a temple to his previous achievements. Emma, don't you think you should be encouraging Jake to get back into the corporate world, she remarked quietly, all this bakery talk and volunteer work. It's not really suitable for someone of his caliber, is it? I was shocked. Mom, Jake seems happier now than he has in years, I told her. Isn't that what's important? Mom shook her head, her gaze drawn to a photo of Jake in his fancy outfit taken a few years ago. But he had a very promising career. All that schooling, all those opportunities. It all feels so pointless. I attempted to explain that Jake was finding fulfillment on his new route and that he was becoming a better person. But mom wouldn't listen. She seemed intent on Jake returning to his high-flying corporate career. 
This chat made me realize a frightening reality. While Jake and I worked on our problems, our parents, particularly mom, were struggling to adjust to the new family dynamic. They had focused so much of their pride on Jake's corporate achievement that they failed to appreciate the importance in his personal development. Over the next few weeks, this became a frequent problem. Mom would make subtle and occasionally not so subtle remarks about Jake getting back on track. She'd email him job advertisements for corporate opportunities and discuss connections she could make for him. A particularly heated occasion occurred during a family cookout. Jake was excitedly informing everyone about a group of seniors he had assisted in setting up their first email accounts. The excitement on his face was apparent as he told how one elderly woman had burst into tears over being able to see images of her great-grandchildren who resided across the country. Mom, instead of sharing Jake's joy, merely remarked, that's fine, honey, but have you considered using your skills for something more substantial? I heard the city's tech firm is hiring. The light in Jake's eyes dulled and I felt a wave of protectiveness I hadn't felt since we were kids. Before I could say anything, Dad intervened. Linda, he added gently. I believe what Jake is doing is quite significant. He's making a significant difference in people's lives. It was the first time I had witnessed Dad openly disagreeing with Mom about Jake's choices and the tension was evident. Mom pursed her lips but did not protest further. Jake, to his credit, has handled the situation gracefully. He softly but firmly informs Mom that he does not want to return to that life right now but I can see the strain it is having on him and his relationship with our parents. Dad appears more receptive of Jake's new route, although he does not always stand up to mom when she starts pressing Jake. It's causing fresh tensions in our family just when Jake and I were beginning to rebuild our relationship. I'm torn on how to handle this. On the one hand, I want to encourage Jake on his road of self-improvement. On the other hand, I don't want to escalate our argument with our parents, especially because we've only recently begun to confront our prior concerns. Jake and I have discussed it and we are both at a loss, we're thinking of having another meeting, possibly with Nana Rose there again, to handle this new difficulty, but we're concerned about how mom will react. As always, any advice is appreciated. How do we help our parents, particularly mom, understand and embrace Jake's new direction in life? Update 3 It has been another month since my last post, and I am pleased to announce that we have made tremendous progress in our family situation. After much deliberation, Jake and I decided to approach our parents directly. We invited them and Nana Rose to my bakery for an after-hours family meeting. We hoped that neutral territory would assist to keep things quiet. I was nervous all evening before the meeting, so spent the afternoon stress baking, resulting in an oversupply of cookies and muffins to place out on the tables. As people arrived, the bakery filled with the familiar aroma of freshly baked goods, a perfume that always makes me think of home and family. So the conference began tensely. Mom was protective from the beginning, arguing that she simply wanted the best for Jake. Dad was relatively quiet, but you could see the conflict on his face. Nana Rose sat silently, her wise eyes absorbing everything. Jake talked first, gently explaining how much pleased and fulfilled he was in his new life. He discussed how satisfied he was with his volunteer work and how he was considering starting his own small business after being inspired by the success of my bakery. Mom, Dad, he continued, his voice firm but tearful. I know you wanted the best for me and I appreciate everything you've done, but the corporate world wasn't making me happy. I was constantly anxious, didn't sleep well and felt like I was losing myself. For the first time in years, I feel like I'm doing something worthwhile. I told Jake how delighted I was of his personal development and how our relationship had improved. I also expressed my dissatisfaction with mom's persistent pressure on Jake to return to his previous lifestyle. Mom didn't take it well initially. She became distraught, expressing her inability to comprehend why Jake would toss away his degree and chances. We sacrificed so much to give you those opportunities, she continued, her voice breaking. How can you just walk away from all of that? That is when Nana Rose walked in. Nana Rose addressed mom with a straightforward question. What's more important to you, Jake's resume or Jake's happiness? That question appeared to stop mom in her tracks. For a time, she was speechless. Then, to everyone's amazement, she began crying. Mom revealed through tears that she had always been insecure about her family's modest origins. Jake's corporate success had been a source of pride for her, a way to demonstrate that our family could succeed in the world. Jake's departure from that existence seemed to her like a step backward. I just wanted you to have everything I never had, she replied, addressing both Jake and myself. I didn't want you to struggle like your father and did. It was a watershed moment. For the first time, we all understood why mom behaved the way she did. Dad, finally finding his voice, acknowledged that he had given in to mom's pressure on Jake because he didn't want to disappoint her, despite his own pride in Jake's new path. I see now that we were so focused on external success that we forgot about what really matters. Dad stated, his voice full of sorrow. I'm sorry we put that pressure on you, Jake and Emma. I'm sorry we didn't appreciate your path as much as we should have. The conversation that ensued was open, emotional, and ultimately therapeutic. 
We talked about redefining success and the importance of personal pleasure over cultural expectations. Mom began to see that her actions, while well-intentioned, had been damaging. Nana Rose told us about our family's history, including great-grandparents who survived the Great Depression and Grandpa's decision to become a farmer despite his pin. Our family's strength, she told me, has always been in our ability to forge our own paths and support each other no matter what. By the end of the night, we had reached several key agreements. Our parents would appreciate Jake's decisions and not stress him on his profession. We would hold regular family meetings to check in and handle any issues before they escalated. We would all work on expressing our emotions more openly and honestly to one another. We'd rather encourage one another's happiness than try to meet external standards. While we were cleaning up, Mom approached me. She grabbed one of the cookies I had cooked earlier and took a nibble. These are wonderful, Emma, she replied softly. I'm sorry I didn't appreciate your talent as much as I should. Would you, are you willing to teach me how to create these? This simple request seemed like the start of a new chapter in our relationship. Things have greatly improved in the weeks since that meeting. Mom has ceased sending Jake job postings and has even expressed an interest in his Wii's charity activities. Last week, she stunned everyone by asking Jake to teach her basic computer skills, exactly like he does in his community center lessons. Dad has become more vocal about his support for both Jake and myself. He's been assisting me with some business planning for my bakery and brainstorming ideas with Jake about his potential new business endeavor. As for Jake and me, our bond is only getting stronger. Our Sunday brunches have become the highlight of my week. Last Sunday, Jake attempted to make a pie from scratch using one of Nana Rose's old recipes. The crust was a little tough, and the inside was runny, but we laughed together while eating it, planning his next baking attempt. There are certainly tensions and old patterns that creep in from time to time, but instead of allowing them to fester, we discuss them honestly and work them out together. I know we still have work to do, but I'm so pleased with how far we've gone as a family. Jake's embarrassing event at Amy's wedding, as unpleasant as it was, proved to be the trigger for significant positive change in our lives. Thank you all for your encouragement and wisdom along this trip. Your perspectives help me navigate these difficult family relationships. While we are not perfect, we are learning and growing together, which is what truly matters.